everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Feedsy plugin. If you want to import RSS feeds into a web, uh, your WordPress website, maybe you want to build a network site. This is very popular, especially amongst local websites. I know I've been part of a bunch of smaller organizations, nonprofits that are building off of, let's say, the news and events from other sites around the local community, pulling in RSS feeds so that you can display content there. Adds a bit more of value. It's a great way to aggregate that content and to get sort of uh, dynamic content into your site if you can't heavily publish a lot of site or you're trying to be like the hub of news and awareness. This is a sponsored video by my friends at Theme Isle. They uh, paid me to make this video, though all of my thoughts and concerns are uh, my own. They're not dictated by uh, my friends at Theme Isle. You can find Feedsy for free in the WordPress.org repo. And you can purchase the pro plan, which we'll discuss as we move along this tutorial, uh, right on their website at Themile for $99 for the first year, $199 uh, thereafter for one site. And then it goes up from there for the developer and agency plans. Um, there's a lot more involved with the developer and agency plans. Things like uh, ChatGPT, API support, Amazon advertising API support. What are those for? Like, why would you want to do something like that? Well, maybe you're uh, creating summarized content based off of these RSS feeds. The developer plan would be, you know, ideal for somebody building out uh, some kind of synopsis site like that. And of course, those of you that are doing more of that affiliate link product review site, like traditional product review site with Amazon, uh, or, you know, you're integrating Amazon uh, advertising into your media site, that's what you'd want to jump up to developer and uh, agency plans for. Sadly, we're not going to look at that stuff today. We're just going to look at the free plan, but just know, hey, if you're really in this game and you're building off of this dynamic content, Feedsy has some of that stuff in the more advanced plans. So I have Feedsy uh, free installed on this sample site. And what I want to jump into is to get our hands dirty immediately with a test so that you can see how this works. If you've never seen what an RSS feed is or how it works in this uh, context, let me demo that for you right now. RSS is a fantastic technology. I talk about it a lot in the podcasting world, which allows one to distribute your content to other places among amongst the web, whether it's onto a WordPress website, whether it's a podcast that people are listening to. RSS is like that business card, it has a link and you say, here's my RSS link, scoop up all the data, <laughs> scoop up all the content that I want to publish out into the world. By default, WordPress has a slash feed, Maybe you don't know this. If you go to your URL of your WordPress site, if you go to a category and do slash feed at the end of it, it's an automatic RSS feed. Like WordPress enables that by default. We don't talk about it much because it's a 25 year old technology, uh, but all WordPress sites do that because the nature of WordPress is a blog. It's about publishing content uh, on the open web, like the literal open web. And RSS is a key component um, to that discovery. The inverse, just if I could just pull the classroom aside for a moment, the inverse is social media sites, uh, algorithms, feeds, like social feeds. That stuff is curated, AI-driven, advertising-based RSS, publicly distributed. You can get it anywhere, and we'll save that for another, another lesson. Let's take a look at the Feedsy block uh, so that I can show you really quick how it works. There's a few ways that you can implement Feedsy. You can use it as a block, like I'm about to show you here, or you can actually pull RSS content in and save it into a post on your website. We'll look at that in a moment. Now, by default, WordPress actually ships with a default RSS block, and I'll compare and contrast these two in a moment. So let's add this Feedsy RSS feeds block, and I'm going to put in uh, the feed link to my website, the wpminute.com slash feed. We'll load that feed and voila, instantly, uh, the content is here on this website. Now, I believe my site has five in the RSS feed. Uh, that's something that I think I had uh, dialed back or actually might've been my web host, I forget. Uh, but you know, it depends on what, how much content you're, that feed is putting out. You can, if you're controlling the feed, you can control how much goes out. Other places might have a different number. I have five. So it's displaying the last five items right here. And if we pull up 
the block settings uh, tray, what we could see is here's my title of that piece of content, which is the WP minute, and every title and post that's coming out. And I was saying invalidate. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's how my site is shipping out the uh, the date side, but you can see post title, featured image, which is also not in my feed. And I think that might be from the performance side or the caching um, plugin that I was using. It's sort of just shutting that stuff off so it saves like bandwidth and crawlers and stuff. But the core content is here. And uh, there it is. It's the feed right inside of this block or post, depending on where you want to do it. And you click out and it goes to the website. That's the simple version of an RSS. That's what it does. It gets that data. You put it onto your site. The Feedsy block has a lot of things that you can do with it. Um, like you can assign a message to show if the feed is empty. Uh, if nothing is available, then you can type in your own message. If you want to dial back the amount of posts, you can simply show or hide uh, the amount of uh, items per uh, per line there. We can sort it ascending, descending by title, feed caching time. How long do we want to cache that data in this feed? You can uh, adju adjust that here. You can set the open links to go into a new tab or on the same window. Make this link a no-follow link. Uh, so if you don't want to send any SEO juice that way, is that what the SEO people say? Uh, you can do that. Display item title. If we check that off, that'll take out take out the uh, title of the post. Generally, you probably want that. Display the post description. You can check that off or uncheck that, and that'll take the uh, excerpt or the description down. Or you can limit it to characters. So if you just want to say 100 characters, you could type in something like that. And then that's the advanced from core WordPress. Filter items. This is in the pro. Now, in the pro versions, you can filter stuff. So if you're looking for certain keywords, if you're looking for certain date ranges, the pro version of Feedsy will allow you to dial that stuff in even more. So again, if you are making a collective news source of information, maybe you have landing pages that you're specifically watching a certain keyword, um, something like Google stocks or Apple stocks, and you're pulling in feeds from a bunch of like financial sites, you could filter in these uh, these feeds to display only that type of uh, type of data. So there's a bunch of filters that you can go into there. If we take a look at the style, same thing, we can display an image if it's available. You can check off no, that will show no image. Uh, by default, you have that fallback image, which you can set uh, in the feeds, the options there, but we can go yes or no, depending on what you want. And then thumbnail dimensions, how should we treat HTTP images, feed layout, this is if you're if you want something more than this list view uh, with Feedsy. The Pro version has a bunch of different layouts, and you can control the columns and such uh, with their you know Pro templates, if you will, uh, that you can make that uh, feed look a little bit different. You can disable the default to style, uh, which I think is more of like a developer uh, kind of thing. And if we go into Advanced, we can go in and say, you know, should we display additional meta fields uh, out of author date time? You could set that stuff up too if you wanted. Uh, if we just do author, there it is. It says by Matt Medeiros. Um, we could do, we could do date and then author like that. We could, you know, kind of customize the way that that looks if you want. So it's, you know, customizable for that metadata. Display the feed title. That'll take off the WP Minute uh, title if you want. Ignore the first items if, if you want. So if you're promoting maybe an RSS feed, uh, you know, featured post above this, you might say, no, I, I want to avoid the, that first one and only, you know, display from one on. Lazy load the feed. Referral URL, again, if you're doing something that is referral-based, um, promo, affiliate links, that kind of thing, that's only going to be in the um, in the pro version. And then lastly, you can wrap stuff in custom CSS, again, the more for the developer types. So all of that is to say there are a lot of options for customizing this RSS feed in this block. Comparing that, you know, if you're somebody saying, well, uh, you know, when, um, WordPress has, I almost said Windows, <laughs> WordPress has uh, a default RSS feed block inside of it already. What's the difference? So if we take a look at the wvminute.com slash feed, use the URL, that's it. 
<laughs> no, there's a little bit more, uh, but it pulls in the feed. And if I check off all the boxes there, uh, you can display the author, display the date, uh, the number of items, the same, but look, it's not even a comparison on the amount of uh, options that you have with uh, Feedsy versus the default um, the default WordPress RSS block. Uh, like you can pull in the RSS stuff, you know, and it works, but if you need any kind of control customization, um, styling features, the templates to make this stuff look better, if you're using the default RSS block and you're like, man, I need more options, this is where Feedsy comes in uh, because it's just going to, you know, really win out the day on core uh, RSS block. Okay, let's jump into taking a look at another feature that uh, that Feedsy has. Let me go ahead and delete these and just start over. Now I have uh, something here already set up and then I'll show you how I have it set up. I have something called categories already set up in the Feedsy options. This one's called WordPress News. So if I click this and load the feed, it's actually loading uh, content from multiple feeds, the WP Minute and uh, the WP Tavern uh, websites. And you can see right here, if we take a look, Nathan Wrigley, uh, this is one of his uh, podcast interviews, and then there's my post, and then Nathan and Wrigley again, uh, because nobody's really posting content on on the tavern recently. Uh, it's just Nathan and his podcast, but it's it's what Feedsy refers to as a category, and it can be a bunch of RSS feeds in one, uh, which is really powerful. Again, depending on what kind of site you're putting together, if you're grouping a bunch of dynamic content together categories will be a real lifesaver. Let's go ahead and take a look at those feed categories in the Feedsy options. Uh, very easy. I call this one WordPress News. When we edit that, uh, it's just these two feeds separated by a comma. And if you were to put an invalid feed in, it would take it out uh, immediately. If you tried to put in something that wasn't a valid RSS feed, it would just pull it out. And then you hit update. And that category is saved there. So when you go and add the Feedsy block, you just select the category name and voila, there's your category of, uh, of RSS content. So very straightforward, very useful for some of those large sites. And I should also say that this content isn't generally, um, you're not always pulling in content from third-party sites. Sometimes if you're working as uh, in the higher ed space or you're an agency and you consult with higher ed clients, um, sites, companies that have lots of satellite sites. So again, higher ed, I spent a lot of years working in selling into higher ed and understanding how they use WordPress. And colleges have multiple WordPress sites, like your business college, science college, all under one university, right? So there could be hundreds, if not thousands of little WordPress microsites. And if you're pulling in that data, Sometimes RSS is clean and easy. Like you might sit down and say, oh my, how are we gonna pull in this content and this data from all these other WordPress sites? RSS, baby, very easy, very clean for the most part, depending on what you wanna do. And Feedsy makes it uh, really easy. Let's take a look at the import post. This is going to take a feed and actually turn it into a blog post. I think I ran this once on this staging site, so there might be a uh, duplicate content, but let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the name of this is gonna be the WP Minute. Uh, actually, I could use the feed category. So let's just do that. We'll do WordPress news category. So I won't put in a, a source here. You could put in your RSS feed that you're looking to pull from. Um, you can filter by keyword, exclude items, and filter by date range. Only available in the pro plans. But I, I will say that, again, if you're looking for this stuff, this kind of feature, it's just a lifesaver. And Feedsy slash Theme Isle, I've always enjoyed how they've built their menu and their, their UI is very clean. And I appreciate the older I get the big, bold text, <laughs> right? I'm not trying to, it's not like a TikTok or Snapchat where you have to kind of figure out how to use a secret UI. Uh, Theme Isle and team do a really good job there. Map content. Now you could have um, post types. If you had custom post types, you could create a custom post type and send that data, uh, send that uh, RSS data to a certain custom post type if you wanted, or to a page if that's something that you want to do. I'm just going to set it to good old posts. Um, post taxonomy, you could give it a taxonomy if you want, 
wanted to. So you could say uncategorized. I'll do that for now. But you could have RSS as a category if you want. What's the status, publish or draft? So maybe you're pulling in RSS content and you're commenting on it, maybe rewriting it, and you don't want it to go live dynamically. You want to be able to review it and edit stuff. Uh, post status would be a great way to do that. I was going to leave it to publish for right now. You can modify the title if you want. You can insert uh, tags if you want uh, to sort of customize that. I'll leave all this stuff the same item content. Uh, that'll be the actual content of the post that you're pulling in. If you wanted to append to something to that, you could. Uh, featured image, you could do all of that fun stuff as well. General settings. Uh, again, on the pro plan, they have a cool auto delete feature. Again, depending on what kind of site you have, if you have a lot of RSS feeds coming in, that's going to start to be a lot of data storing in uh, your either media files or your database. You can auto delete this stuff. Remove duplicates. Item count, how many do you want to pull in uh, initially and when the process runs? And then a fallback image. You can set that fallback image that we saw when we were um, sh showing off the block. So we'll go ahead and hit save and activate. And right now we're back at the import post dashboard. Current status is enabled. Remember, it's pulling in the feed category WordPress news. And we'll run now. And it's going to import those RSS feeds. It says refresh this page to update the status. So we will. And you can see we found 10, zero duplicates, 10 posts were imported, 10 cumulative. So as this process runs over time, uh, it'll give you the count there of how many items you have. And then the status, meaning that the RSS feeds are all valid inside uh, of this process. If we go to posts, here's all of... Uh, the post that it just pulled in, remember I set it up to uncategorize, which I know it defaults to by default in WordPress. I should have made up another category there. But you can see this is definitely not my post. And if we hover over, it says imported by FeedZ from the WP Minute. Um, imported by FeedZ from the WP Minute. These are all of my, the WP Minute is the process name that I gave it. So you can always hover over it and know what process it came from uh, so that you understand that this was an RSS thing that happened. And then here's all the content it pulled in from that RSS feed, right? This is a, uh, an interview with Nathan Wrigley and Jamie Marslin. Uh, if we look at my WordPress versus Webflow post that I made a couple weeks ago, that's, uh, that's there right there, pulled right into my site. So very easy stuff. Themeisle does a great job with the UI, the menus, the configuration of all of their plugins. I really do uh, enjoy that. If you go into the settings, there's a bunch of stuff here. We'll go ahead and look at that uh, as well. You can set that fallback image if we want. We can disable default styles by default. Um, headers, if you want to send a user agent string when you're pulling in content uh, to identify to other sites, this is, this is who's coming for this content. If there's a proxy needed, uh, miscellaneous stuff. I won't go through all of it. Uh, Word AI. This will be something that will allow you to rewrite articles um, as they come through. So if you wanted to summarize stuff uh, or, you know, have like a synopsis, give a different summary through AI, uh, these are the types of things that it unlocks, including things like Spinner Chief, uh, Amazon product advertising, and Open AI, right, to do all of that sort of either rewriting or summarizing or other artificial intelligent actions that you might uh, want to act on when you pull uh, pull in a feed. Uh, looking at the website, just to close things out, free versus pro. Again, we talked about a lot of this stuff, referral affiliate links, individual fallback images, custom fields. Uh, all that stuff is going to be in pro along with all of the other integrations. Uh, again, yeah, hands down, if you're looking for a plugin that's easy to use, pulling in RSS feeds, um, it's not going to complicate things. Check out Feeds, Feedsy uh, from Theme Isle. Go to their site. Use the link in the bio if you in my description if you want to uh, upgrade. I don't make a commission or anything like that. Uh, this is a sponsored video. Uh, but uh, again, I really love the stuff that Theme Isle puts out. I think they put a lot of great effort into making things clean and easy. Feedsy. Clean and easy. Feedsy. Easy feedsy, <laughs> easy feedsy. Uh, check it out. Uh, you can check out that plugin for free for all the stuff that I just showed you. Thanks for watching today's video. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. We'll see you in the next one.